All right, everyone, welcome back to another Coyote Radio Show and Podcast. We had a great guest today. We got two of you on here today from Low Water Bridge Band. Now, I'm a I'd say I stumbled across you around Christmas last year and been a fan ever since. You guys are definitely doing big things. Um Logan and Riley, if you if you guys could just kind of Take us on that journey, man. How 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 did it all start? How did you guys form and get to where you're at today? Because I feel like you've really, I don't know, you're, this band isn't very old in the grand scheme of things, but you've done a I, lot already. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it kind of all started uh, a while ago. I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm from this area up here. And uh, uh, Riley's brother, Alex, is married to my cousin. And I knew him and Al- uh, Riley had been playing music together forever. And, I was moving back up, sent Alex a message and was like, hey, man, we should, you know, get together, start up a band. Uh, these guys were already in another band. So he was like, oh, I don't know. You know, if we got time, we can probably jam out here and there. Um, <laughs> here we are like four years, five years later, you know, doing this whole band thing. But, you know, we had um, started off with me and Alex uh, crossing the low water bridge to write music at each other's houses. And then uh, we just started picking up other members and, you um, now it's kind of gotten out of hand and here we are yeah <laughs> gotten out of hand yeah we picked riley up probably about six seven months after we started like playing together and um my favorite drummer so it was it was i was really excited to get him so and and i had actually really started working on the first album before i was like a member member you know we we're still we were just coming out of covid um I was trying to get my ducks in a row before I could commit full fledged with these guys. But doing that first album was a um, kind of catalyst for me, I feel like. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we can we can grow this for sure. Yeah. And I think the thing that kind of helped our band out big time, a lot of bands said they you know, had a hard time during COVID. But we started right at the beginning of COVID, uh, like January 17th, 2020 was our first show together. And then, you know, a couple months later. COVID. Yeah. So, I mean, from there, we kind of never really had an uh, an empty weekend. We've just been playing all weekends, you know. I think COVID kind of helped us out a little bit. Huh. Yeah, that's... um. Okay, now it makes sense. Now I know where the name came from. Low Water Bridge. You're just yeah. back and forth. Yep. Yeah, sorry, there's a lot of stuff back there. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're in Virginia now. What part? What part? Uh, in the Northern Shenandoah Valley. Um, near Winchester, Virginia. We're on the outskirts of Winchester. Berryville, Virginia, but okay. people people recognize, they're like, oh, I've seen Winchester on a sign before. Yeah, they know Winchester. They know Berryville. Berryville. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it on a sock. <laughs> yeah, uh, congrats on that, the first record. That, I after hearing that, I felt like the good luck trying to beat that. <laughs> well, thank you. Honestly, I mean, <laughs> it was, it's tight all the way through. There's not a bad song on it. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I mean, with this, that whole album process was us kind of getting to know each other as musicians, you know, kind of figuring out each other's boundaries as far as, uh, you know, what we're willing to play versus what we're not willing to play. And that first album was pretty raw, I think. Yeah. Um, Riley mixed that first album and did a great job. But I think this next album, he's really kind of shown his growth on on the mixing stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, um, thanks to you guys, you've already seen, I've listened to the, the new record, I don't even know how many times now, uh, since you've already sent it, so I'm at work, I do taxidermy work for a living, so I'm in there just, like, working on deer or whatever, and I just got tunes going all day long, so it's been on repeat for a while. <laughs> yeah, cool, it's um, a little bit different sound from the first time. It is, it is, um, uh, can you kind of take us, like, what made you i mean you don't want to give too much away i guess i don't know what you want to reveal and not reveal about the new record as far as i think it's it i mean if you've never seen any of our live videos or been to one of our shows you, you know you know we don't sound quite like that album anymore we've kind of uh filled things out we've kind of people have just kind of fallen into the right places as far as instrumentation and you know again just another two years of growth um what do you have to say? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, exactly that. Anyone that has seen us live, especially the past year, 
they'll be like, oh yeah, like, okay. like yeah, because it we have I, I suppose straight away from not necessarily like uh, bluegrass, but like the uh, we just kind of elevated to maybe perhaps a little bit more um, maybe a little more rock to it. Um, I think we just kind of brought our own little little nuggets into the band. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's several different instrumentations going on. And a lot of guys that try and pull that off, I feel like it gets too muddy or cloudy. And somehow you guys have been able to bring it together and it sounds natural and good. And it's like almost strange in a way, too, because it's like, I don't know, one some of the songs were just, I can't even really explain it. You know, one second you're hearing horns. Then there's banjo, and it's like all this stuff being mixed together, but it flows so nicely. You know, it's just like a mix of rock, well, we, blues. We always try to say we, we, it doesn't matter what, you know, anybody can come to the table with an idea, and as long as it sounds good, we're all we're all happy with it. So yeah. those kind of things just kind of like, like I said, fell into place, you know, almost like they were meant to be there. Yeah. And I think like the kind of the 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 not stepping on each other during their solos and stuff. I think that kind of comes from a bluegrass background, really, because that's kind of how you know bluegrass goes. You take turns and, but uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. The um, I mean that's kind of my approach with this whole podcast thing. Really, I don't have a distinct lock on types of music. I mean, it's got to be in the country realm, but that's a huge market, right. really. But I just figured if it's good, it's good. So that's what I'm going with. If I like it, I like it. And that's what's yeah. going on the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how long did it, uh, the new record's got 10 songs on it. Um, how long did it take for you to put this one together after, you know, you, you went through the first record, that process. So did it, was it a little bit easier the second time around? Or well, I mean, so after the first album, then we released the the two singles um, on four twenty of I, last last four twenty or whatever. Yeah. Um, but and then we got started on these kind of right away. It it spent. I, I figured out it was over a calendar year, but what happened was we started hot and heavy, and then that year's summer just booked up just like crazy. And it just got super busy and it was hard to go at it as, you know, we were trickling, doing sessions with it. Um, it definitely helps having, you know, Riley's basement recording yeah. studio, you know, kind of go in and out as we needed to. Yeah. And as, as short or long of sessions as we need to, um, we took as much time as we need on everyone's part. You know, I, I, actually, every one of these guys spent just hours and hours just on their part on one song um yeah. and you know that, that's usually a combination of not settling you know until it's until it's right some of it's just because some of it was new and we we're just trying new shit and as the idea was coming to us um so it was it was time well spent for sure right it, it, it took a while and i feel like the maybe even the average listener would be like yeah this sounds like some time was put into it and there was <laughs> yeah a lot of the songs we kind of uh we recorded the first few ones and then alex and i and riley are writing songs as we're recording so mm -hmm. we're just kind of throwing new stuff at these guys and i mean they're awesome they know exactly what they want to do with it and like you said they don't settle until until they get that sound they want so mm -hmm. and honestly we had i'm looking at a list that doesn't exist anymore there was <laughs> a master list of all the stuff that we needed to do but at one point, we were considering 14. Yeah. It's like we had 16 songs, like honestly, that we could have, you know, completed and it would have been great. Um, but we just started realizing, it was like, man, these 10 here, though, are really forming right. And I think it'd be beneficial for us to just like keep it nice and tight. And, um, yeah. Yeah. That, that was an important, that was important for us at that time because we were, kind of getting overwhelmed we're like shit man we have so many songs to do that can be awesome but <laughs> we were just like no let's let's dial it back yeah put them in the back pocket for later yeah we probably have maybe another album's worth of music ready to roll uh yeah. other than recording you know we got to record it but we've got 
and we're cranking more out every day. So we're, we're I'm excited to get the next singles out for the after this album. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at in my head. Yeah, well, once I set this off for mastering, I was just like everything I was listening to. I was it was just new new ideas, you know, ready for the next project. Well, that's gr- good because you know yeah. a lot of guys get hung up for a little bit or just not in the creative mood or mindset. So yeah. if the juices are going, I just keep writing until right. you can't just stand it anymore. Yeah, and we all write songs too. So that's everybody in the band's a multi instrumentalist. Yeah. Everybody writes songs. You know, it's just a ton going on. A lot of a lot of resources we have within the band. So it's uh, it's we're we're starting to have to sift through all of our material, which is kind of <laughs> nice. It's definitely kind of nice to have. That's great. Uh, any chance you guys are coming through Indy anytime soon? <laughs> I'd love to. We don't have anything in the books, but I keep hearing that we need to come come through there. Maybe uh, Duke's Indie. Um, yeah. I keep hearing that venue a lot. Uh, we're down to go anywhere, honestly. Okay, cool. Maybe I can set something up with you guys there or something down yeah, the yeah. road. Um, we should probably talk about this new single that just dropped for, for the new record. Right. Who who was in charge of writing that one? I wrote that song, uh, the lyrics and kind of the guitar melody, a couple, a few years ago actually. Probably not, probably a couple of years ago. Uh, right after we released Midnight Virginia, I started um, kind of just messing around with the guitar melody, and then months and months later, we uh, did a full moon river float down the river, uh, which we do you know in the summer times. <clears throat> And uh, just kind of caught myself thinking about, you know, for some reason, I started thinking about like the sirens in the ocean, you know, the, the sailors talking about the sirens. And we're just thinking, man, what if they had them in, uh, in the Shenandoah River? <laughs> uh, then right about then, I heard a fox screaming right on the on the bank. And it was just like, man, this is interesting. And then kind of wrote the song right then and there and uh, finished a little bit of it up, you know, when I got to practice the next practice. But uh, everybody did their parts first couple times we played played the song together everybody kind of knew what they wanted to do and it kind of just felt uh, felt together mm-hmm. yeah yeah i love i love the tune um it starts off pretty dark even in the way it sounds and all of a sudden it's like real bright and flowing fast right. it's a cool transition um great way to start a a record you know yeah, kind of right. encompasses a lot of what what you're in for for the rest of the record but yeah not 100 percent, but yeah a good it's funny you say that because that was we had initially like one or two other songs that we were almost certain we wanted to open the album um like almost all the way up until like i was done mixing it and then it was just like we even had a whole different name for the album yeah a whole different (laughs) name for the album we just like just switched it we're like let's Ah, I don't know. It was one of those things where the artwork wasn't flowing well and the video we were trying to do wasn't flowing well and we kind of all stepped back and was like, what if we just changed everything up? And then everything started flowing well. The, the, yeah. You know, like, it just started to make sense. But yeah. But yeah, so so Siren, we thought that was, it was like, man, we're covering, like, kind of checking off a lot of our boxes all in that song. Um, and just like you said, it made it for appropriate as the first first song on the album yeah uh back to the valley that's the name of the record right right uh what was there any significant meaning behind that or is it just like getting back to your roots area as far as like what was the meaning behind the record as far as the name um it kind of kind of all stems out of a line of a song of one of the songs mm-hmm. Uh, we did a trip down to Nashville. It was end of the road, you know, end of the trip, and um, we were just kind of like, you know, just get us back to the valley. You know, I think that was kind of the thoughts getting into it, and then that became a line of the song. Shows, actually, yeah, <laughs> uh, it became a line of the song, and then it last minute just became the name of the album. So, okay, so yeah, people listening might not be familiar yet, but. I know what song you're talking about, obviously, because I've heard 
the record. Yeah, right, right. So that makes it sense now. <laughs> yeah. Because at the at somewhere in the beginning or the middle, it was talking about going to Nashville, and like it was, I was like, why would they want to go there? <laughs> then I was like, oh, I see what's going on. Yeah, it's yeah. time to get back yeah. home. We had you, enough. You had to yeah. listen to like the second verse. That's <laughs> yeah, why you, you had me on that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but I mean that. That being said, I mean when you look at all ten of the songs, I'd imagine there's a reference at least once in every song to our area. You know oh yeah, I mean? like everything is just about like even on the first yeah. album. I mean, yeah. it's just we just sing about what's around us and it's um, how we live and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. so that's why it just worked out for us. Shenandoah River is a real big thing in our area for a lot of outdoorsmen and people floating the river on the summers. And um, I mean, it it goes all around us, so we you know we're constantly crossing over it and. But uh, yeah, our, our environment is really important to us and you know how we were raised and how we're living now and all that. Yeah. So. That's awesome. I feel like, uh, and I've said it on other shows, like that area and like over in Eastern Kentucky, that section of Appalachia and some of North Carolina, mm-hmm. that bubble right there, I feel is like making some of the best music out currently. Yeah. Um, but even historically over time, it, there's always been such good music come out of that region. Yeah. I mean, we've got, we're the home of Patsy Klein. Patsy Klein grew up here. So oh, that's yeah, awesome. A lot of musical history in, in our area too. Very, very rich in bluegrass. Yeah. Yeah. Now you, you're probably, I'm assuming you're probably good friends with some like traditional bluegrassers that are like, Hey, you shouldn't be doing that on that song. How do you respond to that? That's why we say we're not a bluegrass band. Because we <laughs> respect our bluegrass buddies. You yeah. Know? <laughs> um, bluegrass is in like probably all of our blood and yeah. in a lot of different ways. Um, but no, we nobody's ever really given us a hard time for our yeah. sound, you know. But uh, although we still pull up we, and people are expecting a bluegrass band, yeah, they're not yeah. expecting such loud amps and drums. <laughs> Two yep. crash symbols. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Old school bluegrassers, their heads might pop off, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we never say it. We never say it's not us. Yeah. And there's lots of like those picking circles around. You know, everybody's got picking circles at their houses. And, you know, sometimes we go uh, have these huge bonfires and there's just tons of bluegrass pickers. And uh, yeah, everybody seems to kind of welcome our sound pretty good so far that's cool uh, i'm about 30 minutes north of uh bill monroe's music park so oh, yeah, a lot okay. of bluegrass there obviously yeah. from over the years yeah um yeah it's great just to have that the um or something else i was gonna tell you guys i forgot it's pretty funny we ramble that's probably our fault yeah we do ramble <laughs> no problem it will come to me no that's why i like this show i, I try and keep it no notes oh, i like it to be off the cuff. Form like this hanging out um what were some of your inspirations though growing up as far as music like what were you raised on uh, i grew up a lot on like um uh, probably like alternative uh rock um then kind of when I found my own feet with music, uh kind of became a sort of a metal dude. Hit college. I played I bought my first drum set off Riley, actually. I played <laughs> uh, you ripped me off, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Still owe him some on that. I was young. <laughs> um played for a metal band and then um so a lot I have a lot of like rock and metal influences uh in, in my past, but I'd say now I have a lot of like I'd say my biggest influence would be probably Gary Stewart. Um, we love Charlie Crockett, you know, the normal Tyler Childers, Charles Wesley Godwin, all those guys. Um, but, I, you know, we all have diverse backgrounds from how we grew up in music. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I was definitely raised on uh, strong Beatles and Beach Boys. Um, my dad would definitely listen to like old country. I remember on like Sundays, 
we called it cowboy music. You know, it was just like, oh, dad's listening to cowboy music. <laughs> or, like, in the car or whatever. Um, but definitely, definitely the older stuff. And then with my brother and I playing music together, at most of our musical uh, influences were pretty parallel. Um, so then we got older and got into like, sublime and incubus and 311 and and all those you know, the 90s rock game was mm -hmm. fucking strong <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> if, if you wanted something different you could find it and find it being done really right well, really well. you know yeah so, how old are you guys i'm 34 i just turned 38 okay see i'm i'm 36 so i understand exactly what you guys are talking yeah, about yeah we, we, i was listening i was going to like deftones and yeah, exactly. shows and yeah. yeah i was a metal head for sure yeah it, it's funny how how that evolves you know like, yeah i feel like i've had this talk with a lot of people a lot like you where it's just like kind of same age yeah we find ourselves like super into this country world but our past was just like totally uh, totally different yeah it's, it's like, here. yeah, it's weird because this comes up all the time on the show. There's like 90% of the artists that have been on the show grew up with some sort of rock, metal, punk background. And next thing you know, they're just like love bluegrass <laughs> or folk well, music I mean, or something. Honestly, bluegrass is just a acoustic metal. Exactly. Metal. Yes. Yeah. And, and the precision and the musicianship it, yeah. is in my opinion, pretty comparable. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about picking really fucking fast and fingering really fucking fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, that's impressive. Yeah. So that's probably <laughs> why these, those two are kind of like mixing now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same feel almost. Our uh, pedal steel player, Justin Carver, he he was in a, I know he was in punk. punk and punk grass band. And then a punk yeah. grass band, yeah. Gallows Bound. They, they good work. Yeah, they but, traveled all, all Oh, he was in Gallows Bound? Yeah. yeah. I know them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was the banjo player for Gallows Bound. It's a funny story, actually. When we met Justin, we had heard that he just started playing pedal steel, so we were like, let's bring him on and practice, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And he's been playing pedal steel for like two, two and a half years now. And, I mean, dude blows me away every time he gets back behind that thing. <laughs> cool. He's he's incredible. That's great. Yeah, I I think that's why I love music so much. It's like I admire all these people that can do it because I can't. Like I, I, I have a banjo. I pick around in my in my room in here for fun and you know learn certain songs, but I just can't do what everybody else is doing. I think it's so cool. So, hats off to you guys. <laughs> well, honestly, I mean the the enthusiasts or you know uh, the aficionados like that maybe aren't necessarily musicians per se like in so many ways are like just as important if not more because right. like we're just we don't know what we're doing. we're just egomaniacs yeah. at heart probably <laughs> and <laughs> we need you guys to keep us afloat yeah yeah so what um you know for the rest of the public what other songs should they probably keep an ear out for i mean obviously you're gonna want to listen to the whole record and like it all, but are there any standouts to you that you're like, man, I really love that track. I think we nailed it. I think the public's really going to enjoy it. Is there anything like Honestly, that? Honestly, that's been kind of a discussion that we've had in the band, and we can't pick one. No. I mean, just deciding on the singles that we wanted to choose, like, it was, it was like, like we could close our eyes and just pick three or two or whatever we're going with. And it'd be fine, right? You know, but um, we're biased. I mean, obviously, but we'll say. I mean, we have been playing a hand, like a small handful of these songs live for most of the year. Mm -hmm. So anyone that's heard us has a slight idea of what is to expect, right? I, I would say, if I had to pick one out of it, I would say "Whiskey Dark." Yeah, w "Whiskey Dark" was one of the the things. I was like, ah. This is kind of a sound cool. Yeah. yeah. That was the first one that really caught my ear, like where I was I don't know if it was the sound or what it was, but that was one where I was like I don't know, it stood out to me more. Yeah, that was probably reason. the first song that we had all started playing together from this new album. Yeah. So I think that's the one we probably spent the most time on. I think there was probably three practices where we did Just nothing but play that song again. over and over and over and over. So there's a lot of work 
into that song. So that's probably the one I pick. But it's hard. <laughs> I consider that a little like country rock opera. Yeah. Country rock opera. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like made in the 70s. I don't know. Like either a country band that's like tripping really hard and wants to make like a cool opera. Like a, Western opera. Yeah. Western rock opera. I don't know. It's just. <laughs> Just like it's very cinematic, so I just can imagine a lot of different things. Yeah, it's yeah. unique for sure. Maybe I like uh, I like your guys' approach, and especially after you explaining it to me, like your approach to music is, I think, healthy instead of just everyone copying, ripping each other off all the time. I feel like this right. is a free flowing group of individuals coming together with ideas and making something special. Right. So. I I think with that, I mean, we're all around the same age. We're all a little older. We've been playing music for a while. And uh, it just kind of, things just kind of, like I said, felt they just fell into place, honestly. Yeah. And with the writing styles, it, it, somehow everybody's like really on the same page. So it just, I don't know. It's one of those things that just kind of worked itself out. Yeah. Huh. So when's the actual big day everyone should remember? November 17th. We're dropping our second album called Back to the Valley. Mm-hmm. November 17th. Man, I'll be here before you know it. Yeah. Uh, and it's also in October. Jeez. It is only October. November it's 3rd. Already October. November 3rd, we're going to drop. We haven't put this out anywhere yet, so it's exclusive information here. Uh, November 3rd, <laughs> we're putting out our second single called Clark County Clay. And that's another one that we had a hard time with, like, picking if it was our favorite or not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Clark County Clay's coming up. I know that one too. Yeah. Uh, are you guys going to tour after the release of this? Do you have like a touring schedule set up or are you still working on all that? Or Yeah, we're working on that. We just started working with uh, some new management and um, um, <clears throat> and they're setting up some, some tour stuff for us for next year. Okay. Start the new year off on the road. Yeah. Yep. That's great. So, Good. I'm excited. Me too. Um, all I want for Christmas to yeah. the road. <laughs> December's always like super. It seems like nothing's nothing's yeah. going on because we're so busy, or we're so busy because nothing's going on. Right. But um, yeah. So figure keep yourself busy. Yeah. Do the holiday stuff. Get you know prep everything up and hit the ground running. In January. Yeah. Is there anything else we should mention that I'm missing here? Obviously, you got to share where the people should find you. Got a website and all your social media contacts. Oh, yeah. yeah, follow us on all our social medias. Uh, we stay pretty up to date with informing everybody and you know stuff like that. Um, our website lwbbmusic.com. <laughs> um, you can get your merch there. Um, more information. We got a ton of merch. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's it. Yeah, I mean the the album's gonna have. Uh... I'd imagine some like some limited edition merch mm-hmm. with you know in kind of similar theme and stuff like that. Yep. Uh can we talk about vinyls? Yeah. Yeah, there's gonna be vinyls. Okay, vinyls. I was that was yeah. my next question. Cause... Yeah, we're really excited about that. Yep. I'm in the middle of setting up the uh, pre orders now, so okay. yeah, we're really excited to hear about that soon. Yeah. Heck yeah. I think, honestly, I think this song, this album is meant to be listened to on vinyl mm-hmm. at some point. If you're, a, if you're a vinyl enthusiast, yeah, yeah. Because I wish I wasn't, but I am. <laughs> I, mean, I hear you, man. <laughs> Gosh, and it, it starts know. stacking up, and it gets expensive. But it's like uh, I can't help it. Yep. <laughs> I, I buy the cheap, damaged ones too. Oh, yeah. Because it's the album cover that I've been looking for. I'm like, well, yeah. just get it, and hopefully I'll get double in a better quality. Um, Later. <laughs> yeah. At least I have it now. I'll scratch to the right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Is uh, Midnight in Virginia on vinyl right now? It's not. We have not put that on vinyl. That's That'll be probably okay. the next thing we do after this album's out. Uh, I mean, we get a ton of requests for it on vinyl, so I don't know why we haven't done it yet. It'd be a good one on... It just has that kind of sonic quality where it's like... You just put it on the vinyl and kick back. Yeah. <laughs> listen or not listen, it's just good to have on. Yeah. Have it on in the background no matter what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, I appreciate you guys being on. Uh, it was definitely an honor. It's great. Yeah. I I think you guys are gonna 
do big things. I really do. I think this band's going to make some noise for sure. Appreciate that. So. Yeah, we try, man. We always yeah. say we just we just try. We just try our hardest. We're working hard at it. Yeah. You may yeah. not like it. We're trying. <laughs> it shows and it's paying off. Yeah. Good deal. All right. Well, we'll be in touch. And thank you again. And uh, hopefully we can set something up and get you up here at Duke's. I'd love to have you. Yeah, man. Awesome. Thank you for having us on the show. Hell yeah. Yeah.